Here's Johnny. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Go ahead. Make my day. Keep the change, you filthy animal. I love the smell of night pump in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I like that. He's gone. I just read an interesting article on the Premium Beat blog. Stop telling people to shoot their films on an iPhone. Pretty much the antithesis to the advice that I give. In the article, the author Todd Blankenship tries to make the case that it's actually discouraging advice to new filmmakers because it often comes from established filmmakers who are not shooting their films on iPhones, but instead are using top-of-the-line cameras, lenses, and gear. He says, why should I do that? Isn't my idea good enough to shoot it the way I pictured it? Why should I settle? Am I not good enough? Am I not motivated enough to just get out and shoot? And in short, the answer is no. You're probably not good enough starting out. And if you won't do it on an iPhone, you're probably not motivated enough to do it on expensive gear. He goes on to say things like, you have to believe in yourself, and makes the point that it's not as hard to source gear as you might think. Both things that are absolutely true. The problem is that when you're first starting out, your films are never going to look like how you picture them in your head, no matter what gear you're shooting on. And the reason why is that you just haven't made enough films yet. You don't know what you're doing. Filmmaking isn't a skill that people are born with. You have to learn how to do it. There's a learning curve. And most likely, your films are not going to start out looking the way that you want them to. When I heard Jason Reitman speak years ago at Filmapalooza at the NAB show, the best piece of advice he gave us, and one that I often quote, is that if you want to make movies, there's no excuse to not be out on the weekends with your friends making movies. But another thing that he said, which is also very true, is that when you first start out, you're going to make a lot of bad movies. And that's really important because you've got to make a lot of bad movies so you can figure out what you're doing. Make as many bad movies as you can, as quickly as you can, so you can start making good ones. Now, is Blankenship right when he says that you should try to make your films on the best gear possible? Absolutely. But when you're starting out and learning the principles of filmmaking, it's more important to just make films, no matter what gear it's on. And for many people, it can be very disheartening to spend a lot of money and effort sourcing good gear, thinking that it's going to improve the quality of their film, only to discover that they haven't learned enough about filmmaking for that good gear to make a difference. When you're starting out, it's more important to learn how to expose shots and to move the camera and to tell the story. The single most important thing that you can do is make films from start to finish so you can see how the process works and learn each step of the filmmaking process. Do that first, and then as your films start to get better and you start to get more comfortable and develop your own language as a filmmaker, then spend the money on better gear. Read Blankenship's article on the Premium Beat blog. I'll put a link in the description below. Remember, if you want to learn how to make better films and act on camera, Guerrilla Film School has got you covered. We put together a free training video on how directors and actors can work together on set. You can get instant access to this free training right now by going to guerrillafilmschool.com slash training.